today we're going to be planting some asparagus. So first thing first, funny story about this asparagus experiment. I've never planted asparagus before and I really don't have any idea how to do it. And I was in a seed ordering mood and decided to order a hundred seeds. And reason for that is for some reason I didn't research enough and I had it stuck in my head somehow that the asparagus only produces one shoot per year, um, per season. So I decided we, since we like asparagus and um, I plan on having some for storage, 800 is not really over planting as far as I'm concerned in our household because we like vegetables so much. So once I um, got the seeds, I realized that <laughs> they actually produce all season. I believe in my research it said uh, between June all the way to September, I believe. Um, and each of the plant will produce several shoots. So, of course, <laughs> then I'm like, what am I going to do with all these asparagus? So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to plant a whole bunch. And um, if somebody wants to buy asparagus crowns and stuff down the road in a couple years locally, I would um, consider selling them. Okay, so that would be another experiment that I would love to to uh, play with. Um, Right now, I know I have a lot of uh, nettle in this patch, and but I know the soil is pretty rich here. So I'm gonna do a test patch. Um, I started 240 seeds of the very uh, Mary Washington variety, which has both female and male. So I also plan on um, collecting some of the seeds from the females and uh, see about germinating those. Um, for more asparagus crowns um, or even more asparagus. So we'll see what happens. Um, I kind of like to let nature take its course. So I'm gonna just play and see what would happen here. You can always make friends too, giving away uh, asparagus during season and uh, also asparagus crowns too. Um, we have a lot of neighbors who don't have asparagus and they would love to have some. Now, I did find out yesterday uh, before I planted just to make double sure. I do that all the time before planting because I do some research when I buy the seeds and then I do another uh, refresher research um, right before planting just to make sure. And of course, as always, it's always an experiment. So I personally, I'm a tactile person. So I learn by um, doing too. And so it makes sense for me to really research. Um, on top of that, we have an, a different microclimate here on the property. So I'm hoping that I get these conditioned, collect the seeds and then plant more from those seeds since they'll be uh, a little bit more adapted to our microclimate here on the property. Now, when I was doing research last night, it said that um, if you want to have enough to consume, you should probably plan about 50 per family. And usually when they talk about per family, it's a family of four. And so that's about, and they said about 10 to 12 plants, asparagus plants per person. And if you want to store them for winter, which we plan on doing, cause it's great for asparagus soup um, during winter time, um, you will want to plant a little, a few more than the 10 to uh, 12 per person. Ooh, lots of wheat, lots of worms too, which is good. So, Really, 240 plants for me this year is not overdoing it because our first year doing it, I'm gonna 
plan about 50% success rate, to be honest, because I don't know how to grow these things. And if I get more, awesome. So now that said, um, asparagus takes a lot of room. So for a family that are going to plant 50 of these crowns or 50, you're talking about, it says about 250 square foot. So it's quite a bit of space. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna plant these tighter because the first year I'm just not expecting them to grow um, that much. So, and I don't know what's, who's gonna make it and who's not. So what I'm gonna do is overplant, and then if they end up growing successfully, I will transplant them. Because I have a lot of things I gotta do, and I really need to find out how they do experimental-wise before I start um, digging up more space. Because as you can tell, it's all grass here, and it's, it's, a, it's an ongoing project for me to create new planting spaces. The good thing about this patch though, my God, there's like worms everywhere, which is freaking awesome. These nettles are chillers. They grow tall too. And these little freakers just keep on coming back. Oh, these are deep. Okay, change of tactic. Let's bring out the big guys. I should name a shovel too. I'm gonna name it Mac, just cause it's big and strong. It looks like a Mac. Kinda into the no digging method. I think our plan this year, or next couple years possibly, is to use a tiller. Till up the property. I think for something, a larger size property, that's the only way to go. And once we have that established, some good planting areas, then um, we will start the no-till method using wood chips and all that. That's what I would prefer. But this no-dig thing not working out when the soils, some of the parts anyway, is pretty poor. Interesting thing with a larger property is that from um, spot to spot, like my front yard soil is pretty loose. It's a little on the sandy side, which is awesome. And, uh, but here, they actually use this as burn patch for wood and things like that. So it's pretty rich itself and it has tons of warmth now um, with biochar and all that. But <laughs> surprisingly where they had a vegetable garden is all clay. I don't understand that. So it's quite interesting. But we conditioned it pretty well last year by planting um, a lot of beans soybeans, black beans, you name it. Um, the return wasn't that great, but the one thing we achieved is we loosened up the soil quite a bit. And then after that, we put down some horse maneuver that we got from a friend. They just had them sitting in the backyard doing nothing. So we asked for those, we put down a layer of the horse manure. And uh, then we, put down a whole bunch of wood chips that we have chipped from just odds and ends branches and stuff on the property. So that worked really well. And now it's, the soil's beautiful. Full of worms, that's what's under the, uh, that's what's under the hoop house right now. Um, so, and I continue to plant things over the winter in there. Um, you know, more volunteer lintel and things like that, which by the way, lintel actually can survive over the winter under that hoop house. Um, it did pretty well actually. Stopped growing probably in January, February timeframe when it was really cold here this year. Other than that, it was growing. Ugh, I don't like these nettles. They hurt. Actually, it's not so bad right now, it's wet. But look at this. Look at this, that's crazy. The bean patch, I think part of the reason why it wasn't growing so well was because we have so many weeds. 
and we didn't realize what kind of weeds they were and how tall they were going to get and how aggressive they were. By the time we caught on to it, um, these weeds, the roots are so entwined with the bean weeds or the bean um, roots, there was no saving unless I was going to destroy the whole entire patch. So we kind of let it grow. But this year, the plan of action is as soon as we see these nettles popping up or going, um, we're pulling them out. And I think little by little, every year, we'll be able to get rid of them as much as possible. But these things you pretty much never get rid of because you break the roots off like what I just did, they're gonna keep on coming back. So, like I said, eventually we'll catch on to these little ones and then be able to get rid of them. So one of the things that we um, are considered doing is Dave went to a wildlife expo um, that's just down the street from us um, this past weekend. And there, the uh, Idaho uh, Fish and Game came out and uh, they were talking about raising pheasants. People volunteered to raise pheasants and so that they can be released in the wild because people hunt pheasants and stuff like that and they go extinct. So we're thinking about doing that. Um, we're starting a research. There's a neighbor down the street from us who's in charge of the pheasants or organization, restoring uh, pheasants. And um, so we can pick his brain big time. I don't think we will do something like this this year just because we already have a whole bunch of things to do and we don't have the setup for it. And I'm, until, unless they're safe and all that, I don't think I want to raise the little chicks. But look, it seems pretty easy. I mean, I also don't have any experience raising chickens either. So that's something I plan on doing. And I know they're different and all that, but I think once you start, if you know how to raise chickens, oh, you know what? I think the worms actually like these nettles. But anyways, once you start um, raising chickens and stuff, and I think that's just another step. And you kind of, you know, you raise the little chicks and stuff until a certain point, I think just a couple of months, and then you release them to the wild, which is kind of cool. So something that we definitely want to do, I was teasing Dave about that because it seems like it's a retirement old man's thing, raising birds. <laughs> So anyway, something for me to tease him about. But I know I'll be the one doing the work. He said he'll help, but that's Dave. I don't mind it. And I kind of like it because then I don't have to kill it and eat it. Although people raise them for food too. Uh, from my research, it seems like I was going to actually collect the eggs and, and see about eating those eggs instead of chicken eggs. But in my research, it seems like they're not, um, they don't produce eggs on a regular basis. It's kind of hit and miss, so it's not as reliable as chicken eggs. But fortunately, fortunately we have a chicken farmer two doors down from us. She's awesome. And I can go pick her brain and she says she'll come and help us set up if we ever want to raise chickens. That would be nice. And initially I was thinking, well, you know, my dogs are old. Once they pass and stuff, I would like to have a little break, go travel or something. But um, I did arrange with her that we could probably do some trading so she can get out of town sometimes too. I will go babysit her animals and she'll come and babysit our animals. So that will work out great if that happens. Wow, wee wee. All right. I think it's clear enough for us to plant something, don't you think? I tried to do some yard work when it's in season or preseason right now in the mornings before I sit down and start doing some computer work. It's good exercise for me and put, puts me in a really good mood playing with dirt. Okay, seems like the soil's pretty loose and uh, 
full of organic matters, I am not going to fertilize these when I plant these. And this is a test patch. So I really want to see how they do with the soil here. Ooh, there's a little warm here. Big warm, actually. So let's see here. It's quite a bit, actually. I planted two per cell here. So that was four, eight. Wow, it's gonna be a lot. But again, I fully expect half of these to die off. So I'm hoping for the best, preparing for the worst. How about that? I'm planting a lot of perennials uh, this year, getting them started. So we can start harvesting the fruits and the uh, from the fruit trees and these perennial goodies in a couple years here. While well, can it continue to eat bunny food this year? Pretty deep roots actually and I think they're kind of root bound and not so happy in these little cells just FYI and I kind of star them they sprouted pretty easily I mean they germinated pretty easily I put them by the fireplace um, but I think they grew a little too fast so they're kind of leggy not getting enough light and all that so but I think they're fine because I tried taking some of these out and Planting them a little deeper, planting these a little deeper. I try taking, they're pretty leggy, so I try to take some of these out, a, a few of them, and uh, plant them a little deeper, and they seem to do just fine, so that's what I'm going to do. If you like the content, please take a minute and subscribe and give it a thumbs up. Until next time, peace. And carrots!